Hey everybody, welcome to the Friday edition of Forecast Lab. Today we don't really have very much going on. The surface map at this hour showing a 1034 millibar high across the Ohio River Valley. And that's co-located with a cold polar air mass, temperatures in the 30s and 40s through that region. And they've had a couple of cold nights in that part of the country. Some of that cold air has worked into the Great Plains, but we're starting to pick up just a little bit of moisture off the Gulf down in South Texas. And that moisture will increase during the weekend. Up to the north, we have a new Alberta Clipper coming in. There it is up there in the Dakotas, but the air back behind it, not very cold at all. In fact, let's go up to Canada itself. Now there is plenty of cold air up in the high Arctic, and some of that is going to leak into the U.S. late next week, possibly the week after. Nothing like February, however, we should see a couple of solid cool downs before we get back into deep spring. So there it is, 1042 millibar high around Iqaluit, southern Baffin Island there, that ridge extending all the way back to Victoria Island. And that's pumping some cold air around the back of this cyclone here in northern Manitoba. So some of that will swing around into Ontario and Quebec, but there's not going to be much southward push on that. The water vapor imagery showing that upper level low making its push across Arizona. And as we can see on the visible satellite imagery, storms going up along the Mogollon Rim. Let's take a closer look at that. And there they are in that higher terrain south of Winslow. Those anvils looking a little bit mushy, but I'm sure they're getting some showers out of that. Of course, this time of year, especially with it being dry, there is a risk of wildfires due to the lightning coming out of these cells. SPC has this meager general thunderstorm area up there in those mountains and pretty cut and dry, but it appears as it continues moving east, it may start interacting with some of that weak moisture out there in West Texas later this evening. And as we can see here, quite warm across the southwestern states. Quite a few mid-90s showing up here. Phoenix there at 90 degrees. Las Vegas coming up to 83. And we're also getting lots of 80s in Southern California, all the way up to Sacramento. And thermal showing up with 97 at this hour. Looking across the south central and southeast states, yep, there's the Gulf moisture return starting to get kind of gusty out there in West Texas. Dew points, however, still remaining in the 30s for the most part. Now it appears we're pulling some 40s up there through the Rio Grande Valley, so that's going to be the start of the better moisture return. But since the trajectories are from the southeastern U.S., it's not really going to be very moist at all. And then panning further out towards the east, Florida there under a brisk northerly flow, all the way down from 89 yesterday to 77 in Miami. And as you go north, 50s and 40s out there in the Carolinas. So there's how the satellite is looking at this time with that offshore cold flow there. That air mass is destabilizing, moving over the warmer Gulf Stream waters. So you're basically steepening the lapse rates in the lowest part of the sounding and also injecting moisture where it crosses over this warm water region. So the result, stratocumulus. Not quite unstable enough to get showers and thunderstorms going, but it is some instability. And the same thing going on here out in the Gulf. So clearly offshore flow, and that's going to spell problems getting moisture back into the southeastern and south central U.S. over the next few days. Very quiet in the northeastern states. Lots of clouds in the Albany and Portland, Boston area. And that's due to a similar effect 
as what we have offshore. Only in this instance, we're not passing the air over warm, moist waters. We're passing very cold air over relatively warm ground. And there's just enough moisture and humidity within that air to generate cloud material. And then as we go further to the west, we pick up a little bit of cirrus associated with the next disturbance upstream. And there's the temperatures and winds at this hour. We're just not getting that warm up. Still lots of 30s. And even in upstate New York, far upstate New York, up there near Plattsburgh, 29 degrees. And we've even got 25 up there around Mount Washington. But as we can see, the lake effect showers have pretty much shut down. So hopefully that's the last we see of it for a while. And here's what we have going on in the northwestern U.S. Upper level disturbance in North Dakota. That's sweeping rapidly off to the east. And out across the west coast, we're filtering in this area of high cloud. And that implies a large ridge axis centered around Idaho. So out here we have destabilizing conditions, upper level flow, stronger upper level flow approaching, and height falls. And on the other side, it's pretty much the opposite. And there's how it looks on the upper level chart at this hour. That's the ridge, and it's a very flat ridge, and that's what's allowing some of that cirrus to kind of pass over the axis. The shortwave disturbance itself located right here. In fact, it's advanced a little bit. And there it is in North Dakota, the area of lift out ahead of that. And let's see if that's going to cause any weather around Minneapolis and Chicago. Well, it's certainly possible. There appears to be an increase in the vertical velocity field. So that could have an effect there in Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Michigan through the overnight hours. Ridge building into the north central U.S. and then down to the south. There's our upper level low. That's going to be tomorrow morning at dawn, but this is about where we're at right now. Center of the low, just north of Phoenix. So that's going to roll out into the south central U.S. tomorrow, and that's going to be about where it's going to be tomorrow evening. So the associated vertical motion field out there in far west Texas, and then it will move out overnight into the populated areas of Texas and out into East Texas on Sunday. And then the next big weather change is going to be up here in the northwestern U.S. Powerful upper level weather system approaching Seattle. That's going to be on Sunday and that'll move down the coast and this will certainly have a very strong effect. The jet stream will be running about like that. That's going to be probably about a good 100 knot jet there, maybe even stronger than that. And we can see the lift out ahead of it right there. And that'll move out into Colorado. So basically the storm is taking a track kind of like that from Sunday evening into Tuesday. So we can put all that together here on the GFS run. There's that deep southerly flow bringing warm air all the way into Manitoba and Ontario, pretty much sweeping through the entire Great Plains. Then during the weekend, that little system that we looked at, that shortwave, that moves into the UP and Michigan, and you can see some very weak rain and snow showers. So that's going to be about all the effect that we'll get out of that. Weak little Alberta Clipper up there in North Dakota, the eastern U.S., kind of cool with a strong 1034 millibar high settling in. And that'll continue to produce an offshore flow component in the Atlantic and the Gulf of Mexico region. A little bit of scarce moisture return here interacting with that upper level low on Saturday. So that'll produce a little bit of elevated shower activity, not very widespread. Then going into Sunday... That upper level low will be working on this area. So with ridging beneath and offshore flow, very limited moisture, it's just going to be kind of cloudy and unsettled in Texas. 
Our next big change will be coming up through this part of the country. That's a big bear clinic system. There it is right there. And as we mentioned, that's going to be heading this way. So there it is, crossing the Rockies on Monday into Tuesday. Compact, powerful little weather system. And that'll move into Colorado Tuesday night. Looks like just enough moisture for thunderstorms up there in South Dakota. And as we can see, that system will spin up there for Wednesday and Thursday and then gradually move into the Midwest region. Looks like some of the dynamics may have outrun the surface system back here, and it does look decoupled from the thermal field further to the southeast. So that's going to be an occlusion. Then let's see tail end of the front producing some storms there for Thursday and Friday in Georgia but overall it's going to be a quiet week with more cold air advection just partitioning off pieces of cold air little bits of it sending it down throughout the week that's kind of what's happening there you can see we've still got that offshore component so we're looking at about another maybe two weeks before we get a solid moisture return up from the Gulf and going to the end of the run here, even around the 12th and 13th, I'm not really seeing that. Just a little sliver of moisture coming up north. And we're not getting the convective weather that we typically see when that moisture makes its way into the panhandles. And this looks like another strong Pacific system. Wow, look at that. Snow showers in the Sierra Nevadas once again. And a cold pool spilling in. 534 decameter Thicknesses all the way down to Santa Monica, Santa Barbara, and Bakersfield. So, yeah, that's going to cross the Rockies around the 14th. Again, this is pretty far out there, 276 hours, but it does indicate that maybe there will be some storms as that punches out for the middle of the month. So that could be the first bona fide outbreak for the middle of spring. And that's all I have for this edition of Forecast Lab. And just as a note of interest, this week we did the show in Adobe Premiere. And today we rebuilt the project in DaVinci Resolve. So, so we're trying to find the ideal program to export these videos out as quickly as possible. And your support definitely helps with that. I hope you all have a great weekend. And we'll see the supporters on Monday and everybody else on Tuesday. Take care. Bye-bye.